Hi, my name is Jonathan. I'm um, Jonathan Zarin, and uh, I have still disease, um, and I'm from New York. I'm 26. I was diagnosed, well, I first went into the hospital in the beginning of March, 08, and I guess they diagnosed me finally after doing hundreds of tests for everything um, about two weeks later, so maybe middle, middle to end of March. I had had um, what I thought was strep throat. I went to the doctor, I felt a little better, and then it came back again in the beginning of March. It didn't just come back again the same way. I had the same swollen glands, same feelings that I had had the prior two times. Um, but this time I went to the doctor and I didn't even feel like I had a fever, but he said, you know, uh, I was like, ah, oh, I, I don't have a fever. You don't need to do this. He, and then t two minutes later, he takes my temperature and he's like, congratulations, you have the highest fever of the day. So I had about 103 and a half, something like that. Um, and he said, you know, go home. I'm going to give you antibiotics. I think you have strep throat. The next morning I wake up, it takes me literally a minute, but I mean a full minute to roll out of bed or to try to get out of bed. My whole body is stiff. I cannot move. I'm just, I'm trying to use momentum to roll my body over to get out of bed. I just, I was like, yeah, I, I can't, it was, it was very, uh, it was very difficult. So now not only do I have this fever and a really bad headache and my glands are swollen, but now I, I can't move my whole body. So now I know something else is wrong. So I call my doctor and he's like, uh, and I'm like, I, I think I need to go to the hospital. So, oh, so, well, first I get out of bed and, uh, and I stand up, but just even bending up, it hurt a little. And I'm walking around, and I just feel a little, you know, a little tense. But now I sort of started to get my, the feeling back, and I'm walking around a little, but it hurts a little. You know, I feel a little, uh, a little pain in my joints. And I call my doctor, and I say, you know, I, my whole body is kind of stiff. I was like, I think I should go to the hospital. I don't really feel that well. He's like... No, let's see, you know, give it, give it today. Let's see how it all pans out. So then I call my old, my doctor, who I have a very good relationship with, my, uh, I guess he was my, my pediatrician, or, you know, when I was 15, you know, growing up, my doctor. And, uh, and he said, oh, no, come on, Jonathan, what are you doing, overreact? And we have a very good relationship, so he's just talking to me, you know, like, oh, come on, you don't need to go to the hospital. But then I, you know, then I call my brother. I was supposed to go to work that day. I work with him and uh, I say, I don't think I can make it into the office. He said, oh, what's wrong? I told him everything. And, uh, and then it just kept getting worse and worse. And then finally I'm calling that doctor back and this doctor and my brother. And then finally they're all just like, all right, go to the hospital. <laughs> so uh, at about that time, this was maybe 11 when I had woken up and I'd made all these calls from maybe 11 to one. And then it um, progressively got worse throughout the day. And my roommate came home at about 5.30 in the afternoon. And he caught me just in the middle of the, the living room, just standing, standing like this. And I just couldn't move. By that point, everything had tensed up. Um, I was in a moment, you know, extreme amount of pain. Um, and he, and just, uh, I, if I moved an inch or, you know, just walking, trying to get to the bathroom, trying to go anywhere, I was, I was just walking like this, like I was 85 years old. And each step I took was like, ow, you know, just a lot of pain, a lot, a lot of pain. Um, so then uh, he, he says, my, my roommate Adam came home and he says, John, we're going to the hospital right now. He called an ambulance. He came with me in the ambulance. And, uh, and my family showed up a little later. By the time I got to the hospital, I was in excruciating pain. Actually, before, not by the time, before, when they tried to get me on the stretcher, I couldn't walk down the stairs at this point. I had only one flight. I had a one flight walk up to my apartment, but uh, they had to carry me down on a stretcher. Um, 
and I was still, if I stayed still, I was okay. But any type of movement, like just the bumping around of the ambulance on the way there was excruciating pain. I mean, really the most pain you can ever feel in your entire life. All over? All over. And when I got there, they gave me a, a, a grading scale or a rating scale, one to 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. When I got there, I said, oh, okay, it's a 10 now. And then every 10 minutes that passed by, I'd say, no, 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 now it's a 10. Okay, no, now it's a 10. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I was just screaming. I was in the emergency room. They took me right away, which was great. Um, but they, I guess, had to take all these tests. They didn't want to give me painkillers right away. But I was just like, give me painkillers. I need them now. You know, I thought I was having my heart then started to tense up. Um, and I had f a form of myocarditis, which, uh, which I guess I, I had swelling in my heart and, and liquid in my lungs. There was a whole bunch of bad stuff going on. I don't know what was going through my mind. I, I guess pain. I, didn't I couldn't really think about, you know, oh my God, am I gonna die? Because I just knew that I was in a lot of pain. No one was helping me out. You know, I, I sat there just for an hour and a half. But then finally, finally they gave me uh, something and I, I, I started to feel better. I'm, I'm, I'm at Beth Israel. I'm in the emergency room still. I'm just in, you know, one of those little uh, cubicle things. And uh, they say, okay, well, you need to take these tests and those tests. And they started testing. They didn't know what was wrong with me. They said that my heart, you know, that uh, my heart rate was working at 15% of its capacity. They said they didn't know what was going on. They knew that I had maybe myocarditis. Um, they, they had to stabilize me first. I remember everyone in my family coming by, but I, I, I remember not knowing if it was real or a dream. I mean, I, I think I knew it was real, but it was just, everything was a blur. I was completely zonked out for the next two days. I was there for two days. Then they moved me because they thought it was originally, they didn't know it was stills yet now at Beth Israel. So they, um, they thought it was some type of heart condition or heart problem. So they moved me up to the cardiology um, unit at, um, at uh, Columbia. So they moved me up there um, and that's when they started doing all the real comprehensive test, testing. I was hoping that, you know, it wasn't something that was terminal, something that I was going to die from, something that I could get through, something, you know, that I could deal with mentally and physically. Oh, so um, Jill, actually, my stepmother, um, she was at a Creaky Joints event, funny enough. Um, I mean, she went, of course, because I was in the hospital and we didn't know what was going on. Um, and we knew it was maybe some type of arthritis or something like that at this point. Um, and she, re she actually met Dr. Paget, who um, works with Dr. Parrish. And I'm, I met him through, through, uh, through Dr. Paget. Um, when, I, when I was diagnosed with stills, I was relieved. Um, but there was also sort of, you know, um, a little bit of feeling of um, uncertainty at the same time because I, no one really knew what stills was. You know, my doctor was one of the foremost experts on stills and he had seen five or six cases over his, you know, lifetime of being a doctor. So it was, uh, it was a little disconcerting, I, I guess. Limitations. I can't really drink that much. I used to, you know, I guess back in college at least. Now I don't really drink that much anymore anyway, but like even going out to a party, um, you know, I'll try to control, you know, myself to having a couple of drinks. Well, if you are dealing with the same thing that I'm dealing with, with, with stills, um, you know, I would just say stay positive. You know, I would... There were times where I, I was sad, where I was, you know, maybe a little depressed, but really the whole time I just tried to stay positive and I just knew, you know, this is what I have to do to get through this. So just, you know, 
do it. Make sure that you stay on top of everything you need to do. You take all of your meds, um, you know, and you just listen to your doctor. And together you will get through this.